All right, let's continue our discussion of cell respiration by talking about the link reaction. So this is the reaction that follows on from glycolysis. So it's actually the first reaction that we're, we're going to talk about in the biosyllabus, which is different from aerobic in aerobic and anaerobic cell respiration. Okay, we're going to talk about how this pyruvate molecule that we formed in glycolysis is decarboxylated and oxidized and then converted into this acetyl compound. Okay. So it's important to understand always where things are happening inside the cell, right? So we said that glycolysis is happening in the cytoplasm of the cell, right? And how that's uh, both for aerobic and anaerobic cell respiration. So the product of glycolysis, both in aerobic and anaerobic cell respiration, is this molecule of pyruvate, okay? Now the link reaction is a reaction which happens inside the mitochondrial matrix, right? So remember, the mitochondria is a site of aerobic cell respiration. So before the link reaction can happen, this pyruvate molecule is going to be transported into the middle of the, the mitochondrion, right? So let's just, just to make sure that this is clear. So if I draw a mitochondrion like that, and then I draw ways, right? These are the Christi on it. Um, and then we have the matrix in the middle. So the pyruvate is inside here when it's doing the link reaction. Okay, just so that's clear. So what happens to pyruvate in the link reaction? Well, there's a couple of steps that pyruvate goes through until it eventually becomes a molecule of acetyl CoA. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen to this three carbon molecule of pyruvate is that it will lose one carbon to produce CO2, okay? So let's just make this super clear here. So this, py this pyruvate molecule contains three carbons and it's going to give off one molecule of carbon or one atom of carbon to form CO2 and therefore it's going to leave behind two, a two carb molecule, right? Just like in glycolysis, you don't have to know what, this name, what the name of this car compound is. You just have to know that first um, pyruvate gives off CO2. And that process is called decarboxylation, right? Which makes sense because right, carboxylation is the process of, of gaining carbons. Therefore, decarboxylation is the process of losing carbons. The next thing that's going to happen is that this molecule will be oxidized, right? Which we know means to lose electrons. Oxidation is loss of electrons. And in the process of losing these electrons, it's going to give it to this electron carrier called NAD. Therefore, it's going to turn NAD into NADH, and we know that that means that NAD is being reduced, right? So if NAD is being reduced into NADH, that's because the carbon is being oxidized. So the next step is oxidation, right? And then the final thing that's going to happen is that the two carbon molecule that has now been oxidized will gain this uh, molecule called coenzyme A, okay? But you can just call it CoA. You don't ever have to write out the full name, okay? So you just add on to this two carbon molecule, a CoA. And what that forms is this molecule down here, okay? So this is called acetyl CoA, and that is a product of the link reaction. So cell respiration is actually relatively straightforward, right? Because it's just a series of steps like glycolysis, the link reaction, the Krebs cycle and whatnot. And you just have to remember a couple of words that kind of describe what's happening to this molecule when it goes from its starting product into its final product. And in this case, it's decarboxylation and oxidation. So the key points to take from this video is that the link reaction occurs after glycolysis um, which is why pyruvate will then enter into the mitochondrial matrix. Decarboxylation and oxidation occur, and this means that pyruvate is converted into a compound of acetyl-CoA. In the next video, we're then going to talk about what happens to this acetyl-CoA when it enters into the Krebs cycle.